It is an unusually cold, chilly, and rainy day here in Central Florida. So I thought I would stay in the van and go over some of the options and features of the ProMaster vans. When we were looking for our van, some of these features, we didn't quite understand exactly what they were. For example, speed control. When I first started looking, I thought speed control meant a speed limiter that was put on the vans for commercial use to make sure that the employee wasn't going over 70 miles an hour. But that's not what speed control is. Speed control is RAM's name for cruise control. So speed control was a definite must. It had to have speed control. And there are actually brand new RAM ProMaster vans that don't have cruise control, which they call speed control. So that was something we definitely checked off that we needed to have when we ordered our van. Whether you're ordering a new van or you're looking for a used van, speed control for us was a definite must. There were a couple others that we weren't quite sure of. And there were some of these options that were high on the list that after doing some research, dropped off the list completely. And I thought I'd share those with you. Okay, so you know about speed control. All right, I made my list. I've got the uh, window sticker here with the options. And I also made a step-by-step -step list. All right, I already talked about speed control. The next one is a convenience group. There's a, oh, by the way, the speed control is a $345 option, which, as far as I'm concerned, should be standard in all vehicles today. The convenience group. The convenience group is a $545 option, and it includes the cargo net, which we don't care about, interior, interior LED lighting, which we really don't care about, a locking glove box, really doesn't matter. Front fog lamps. Those are nice. But I could put my own in or do without them. But those are good. Shelf above roof trim. That's the one. You've got to decide if you want the shelf above roof trim. But you need to know what that is. And I wasn't quite sure. Okay. This right here. This shelf here is standard on all the high roof But that's what I thought that was for a while. I thought that was the shelf. And for $545, I wanted this shelf. There's a lot of great storage here. The shelf that they're talking about is this lower shelf here, which is just above the cab. Let me bring you in closer. This shelf right here, which goes all the way to the front, is standard on all ProMaster high roof vans. So you don't have to pay extra for that. It's a nice storage area. The shelf that you're paying for is this one here. It's the one just above the dashboard. And very convenient. But if you're really tall, some people say that you might hit your head on it. Now, when we were at the dealers, some of the dealers even said that that is not a common option because people hit their heads. Driving the van around for the last couple of weeks, I never hit my head on that thing once until I moved from the back of the van to the front of the van to get in the driver's seat. And then one time I did smack my head into that. But I like it. This van came with it. So I think we'll make good use of it. But it was not a necessity. It took me a lot of time online to find somebody who explained the difference between this shelf and this little shelf up here. So. I thought that was important to include. Okay, 
The next thing, let's move back. Next on the list is the 220 amp alternator. The van comes with standard 180 amp alternator, but the amperage ratings on these alternators I feel is a little generous. In other words, the 180 amp alternator I don't really believe is going to put out a continuous 180 amps. The upgrade to the 220 amp alternator probably won't actually give me 220 amps in real world application. Maybe on a test bench in a perfect world, I get those amperage ratings. Now, why is this important? Well, I was on the fence about this one, but we're going to be using a DC to DC charger to charge our lithium batteries. So I felt it would be a good idea to get that 220 amp alternator. I look where the alternator is in the engine, and it's not an easy swap out. Otherwise, if it was right on top and easy to get to, I probably would have gone with the 180, and then if it didn't work, swapped it out myself. But it's deep in there, it would take a lot of work. So we got the 220 amp alternator. Seating. Seating's the next thing. And seating, I didn't really worry about too much until close to the end, and that became a major consideration. The choices you have in seats, they all come with four-way adjustable seats. But you can also go all the way to the other end and get factory stock swivel seats. But the factory swivel seats don't come with all the adjustments. We need comfortable seats. We're going to be sitting in this van for a long time on long distance travel. So the seating was important. We went out to dealers to look at different vans that they had in stock just to try out the different seats. Drove a few hours in some cases just to try out the seats. I know it's a little crazy, but it became very important. And we found a dealer that had a van in stock that had six-way adjustable seats, and those were the ones. They adjust up and down, front and back, tilt forward and back. They have lumbar support. Those are the seats we definitely wanted, and I think if you do the research, you'll find those are the ones you want also. The factory swivel seats are almost impossible to find. We did find them, but in order to get those factory swivel seats, you're going to have to order your van and request those specifically. We didn't want the swivel seats. I'm going to add swivels, which will increase the height of the seat a little bit, but the factory swivel seats don't have the six-way adjustments, and we found that was more important than the swivel. Seat selection in the van is really important. The only way to get the passenger armrest is to get the six-way adjustable seats. This armrest on long trips is really important. So because of the armrest on the passenger seat, we definitely wanted the six-way adjustable seats. Now, the six-way adjustable seats, how do they adjust? Well, like all seats, they move back and forth. So that's one and two. They have two levers on the side so that you can tilt back or forward. And another one that will raise the seat up and down. So forward, back. And then in the back back here, of course, there's a knob that rotates so you can re recline the seat all the way back. And then there is a little knob right here that is the lumbar support. So if you're going to purchase a van, a Ram Promaster, I highly recommend ordering or looking for the six-way adjustable seats. The factory swivels are great, but they don't have all the adjustments that the six-way adjustable ones have. Another thing is that I did not expect to want vinyl seats. 
in the summertime when you've got shorts on and it's hot and you get in a car or van and you drive around and you stick to those vinyl seats, it's painful. But these are vinyl seats. It was a $200 upgrade, but they're very comfortable. It seems like they're more comfortable than the cloth seats. And people say they'll stay cleaner longer. So we got the vinyl seats. I think it's probably the second time in my life I've had vinyl seats in a car. Heated power fold mirrors, $295 upgrade. Those are the large mirrors on the side that electrically fold. They're heated, so in the winter time, you won't have to get out there and scrape the ice off those windows. Because when you go out there and try to scrape the ice off the windows, you're going to end up tilting them in a direction that's not good for driving. So I thought those were pretty important. Heavy duty suspension. The Promaster 3500 already has a heavy duty suspension. There is an upgrade to a larger sway bar in the back that some people online said that it creates a rougher ride. I don't know that it be a fact, but that's something to think about before you get the heavy duty sway bar. Um, it's a $245 option. If it's something you want, it's definitely something I'd order or look for. But that's something, again, that was important to me. But it really didn't increase the payload capacity. So we decided we didn't need that. Trailer Tow Group. It's a $495 option. If you expect to actually be towing something with the vehicle, that might be a good option to, to get. You can add it yourself. You could save a little bit of money, but on the extended version, there's only a few aftermarket options. So that's something to really think about. Um, I expect I'll probably add that myself if we decide to tow things. Um, I'm also looking at possibly adding a tow hitch to the front of the vehicle so that if I wanted to install a winch, I could install a winch in the front or the back to pull us out of a sticky situation. But that's way down the line after the van's done. <laughs> park Sense Rear Park Assist. That's basically when you're backing up and you're getting close to something, the vehicle will beep at you. That's a $295 option. Blind Spot, blind spot Cross Path Blind spot cross path detection. Those are sensors on the side so that when somebody comes along your side and you're moving over in that direction, the vehicle will warn you. That's a $495 option. Premium appearance group. The premium appearance group basically is a chrome front grille for $295. I specifically don't want that because I don't want the van to stand out. I really don't want people to instantly know that we're in this van. I know it's probably going to be somewhat obvious, but as people quickly drive by, I don't want the van so pretty that they say, hey, there are people living in there. I'd rather live as stealthfully as possible. Windows. You've got the option for windows in the sliding door, the rear door, even the driver's side. But if you get the factory windows, those windows don't open and close. So if you want windows, I recommend you buy aftermarket windows and either install them yourself or have them installed. That way those aftermarket windows will have slide open screens and things to allow ventilation. We didn't get any windows in the van and right now I don't expect to install any windows. If I put a window in, I'm going to lose insulation. It's going to let a lot of heat in and a lot of cold in through where that window is. Yes, you can get window coverings, 
but the window coverings are not going to be as good as an insulated wall. Possibly down the line I might install windows, but right now I don't think so. Also, if I have a window, that tells everybody basically I'm living in the van and I want to try to stay as stealth as I can. There are of course some options you don't want like the cargo partition or the glued in wood floor um, or the rubber mat for the cargo area because you're going to build it out yourself. Now those are some of the options and things that I went through when I was trying to look for and purchase my van. Hopefully those help you out. I specifically think that knowing the difference between these shelves will help quite a few people out. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, hit that little notification bell, and I'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching. Now I got to go back to uh, working on the van. See you later.